it's finally time for showing you another city in Turkey and this one is very close to Istanbul so it makes it a perfect getaway from the bustling city which is only five hours away from Istanbul so welcome to Safranbolu Safranbolu is a beautiful town of Karapuk province in the Black Sea region of Turkey it's famous for its traditional wooden houses, guild bazaars and saffron most of its buildings have been protected and preserved in their original form. In ancient times, the region was formerly known as Paplagonia, where Hittites, Phrygians, Persians, Romans, Seljuks, Lydians, Ottomans, and others held power in the region. Now, we can still see the traditional Ottoman houses and many other places built between the 17th and 19th centuries. Let's show you more about this amazing place, which is also part of UNESCO's World Heritage since 1994. We came to Safranbolu from Istanbul and it was just about five or five and a half hours from Istanbul to the city. What we did is that we took an overnight bus around 2.45 in the morning from Istanbul from the Asian side, from Dudulu in Atashehir, and then the bus dropped us off already in Safranbolu and from the main terminal we just took a taxi to our hotel which by the way it is so beautiful for the bus tickets per person we are paying 320 liras approximately for one trip the hotel we are staying at is one of those traditional mansions that actually makes Safran Bulu special so this one is Akbulut Konak which Konak already means mansion and the place is just so beautifully decorated. I can really feel that I'm like in the Ottoman times in this beautiful place. The place only has about eight rooms in total and ours has its private bathroom, a beautiful bed, everything, and the views are really nice as well. For one night at this hotel, we are gonna pay 1,000 liras and also the breakfast is also included. One of the highlights of Safranbolu are the traditional wooden mansions, many of them dating back to the 17th century. Most of them still maintain the traditional architecture and cultural integrity, and now, most of them have been adapted to tourism in the form of hotels, pensions, cafes, and even bars. The traditional mansion is three stories with six to eight rooms. And an interesting thing of this place is that all the mansions are located in a certain way that none of them blocks the views of the ones behind. Now we're gonna visit the old city hall. And this place was built in 1906 by the Castamonu governors and Pasha. In the museum, we'll be able to visit the conference and exhibition halls on the ground floor, while on the top floor there is a hall called Safranbolu with photographs and an ethnography museum as well. Finally, in the basement, also we'll be able to see how the lifestyle of Safranbolu used to be back in the days, where we can find the small versions of some shops. The clock tower was built in 1797 and was a gift to the inhabitants of Safranbolu by Iset Mehmed Pasha, who back in the days was the Grand Vizier of Selim III. And you can find this tower also inside the complex of the City Hall Museum. This is a 17th century traditional Turkish bath where you can have a relaxing time. The hammam, according to tradition, is separated into areas, one for men and another for women. This mosque is the biggest one in Safranbolu and it was built in 1661 by Koprulu Mehmed Pasha. And as simple as it seems, let me tell you that it has a very interesting architecture. 
For example, the domes is not as usually we tend to see in other mosques, especially in Istanbul, that actually they are like carved in the rock, but here they are only painted, but actually they are quite interesting. It is located next to Köprülü Mehmet Pasha Mosque, and it consists of 48 wooden shops. In the past, this is the place where shoes, in Turkish known as Yemeni, were made. Now we can only find souvenir shops, and only one shop is still making Yemeni to sell to visitors. Here we bought some handmade wooden souvenirs for our house, which is a beautiful candle holder and a box. This beautiful lady's husband makes all the wooden ornaments, and she paints the designs. In the historical centrum, you can find many bazaars selling different kind of things, from products made with saffron, Turkish delights, clothes, and much more. Everything is so colorful and is worth walking through. Now we are just taking a rest in a very historical place in Safranbolu, and this is a must visit. This place is called Jinji Han, which Han is also a caravanserai. Let's remember that a caravanserai in the past were used by the merchants who were going through the whole Silk Road from China to Anatolian lands. These places were usually used by merchants who needed to take a rest. This one in particular was built uh, between 1640 and 1648 during the reign of Sultan Ibrahim. It was used as a caravan's ride until the 20th century, but in the present days, you can find also a hotel. So you can actually have spend a night in this city on a caravan's ride. There are just a few rooms, but it might be a perfect experience. Also, we decided to try some Turkish coffee because of course I just wanted to sit and breathe the ambience of this place. This, this one is Sherbet. So they serve my Turkish coffee with some Sherbet. This is a Turkish coffee, water, and locum. The mosque was built by the Grand Vizier of the time, Izzet Mehmed Pasha, in 1796, and it was inspired on the Nurusmaniye Mosque in Istanbul, which is located outside the main entrance of the Grand Bazaar. It was built in 1796 by Izzet Mehmed Pasha. This is the sole guild bazaar in which hot and cold blacksmiths, coppersmiths, and tinsmiths continue to manufacture handicrafts to this day. In the past, there were many Ottoman bazaars like this one, where different handcrafts were made in the city, but this is the only one that still survives, but gradually is also fading away. Now only a few masters of the historical blacksmith craft remain at the bazaar, like this master who specializes in locks and door handles. This is a place that perfectly shows us the traditions and way of life of Turkish society in the 18th and 19th centuries. This hill is overlooking the historical centrum and it's one of the best panoramic view points of the city. Here you can take a better look of the Ottoman houses. And don't forget to take lots of pictures because the views are lovely. This was originally a Greek church built in 1872, and its name was Aya Stephanos Church, but it's been used as a mosque since 1956. 
In the same complex, we can also find the house where the priests used to live. These were the places we visited on our first day in Zaframbulu. In the second part, we'll show you the natural wonders the city has to offer, such as a cave, saffron fields, a canyon, and even Zaframbulu's unique gastronomy and dishes. So make sure to watch the second part. See you next time. Bye-bye.